Hi, it's Sheridan Webb here from the Training Designers Club, which is the place to be for practical L&D support, especially if you work on your own. And today I have a musing, and it's another one of these musings that's kind of come from a lot of things that have been floating around, um, around me in the last few weeks. And it's all about how to be happy um, and the guide to a happy life. Now, I'm very fortunate I have a happy life. Um, it's not an exciting life, not by, it's quite a boring life to be totally honest, but I am content. Um, and some of these reasons that I'm going to go through now are behind that, I suppose. But the more I looked into these recurrent themes and no matter where you go, there's lots of different things that you can find about, you know, what is the key to happiness? And there isn't a single formula, obviously, but there are some key themes. And as I was thinking about them, I thought, hmm, they also link to what makes great training. So the first thing that um, is talked about in terms of happy people, people who are happy with their lives, is that they have purpose. Um, I'm not going to lie, I don't think I have a great purpose. I just make the best of every day. But it is something that comes up regularly. And when we think about training, L&D, personal development, developing people, it's so important that the purpose of that training is clear. How is it going to make their lives better, easier? How is it going to remove a problem? Basically, what's in it for them? Because if there's no purpose to the training, why on earth would they be engaged in it? The second thing that comes up an awful lot is um, happy people are connected with nature. Now, this is something that's very important to me. If I don't get outside every single day, I do feel it. It affects my mood and it affects my um, productivity as well. Now, we can't run all of our training sessions out in the woods as lovely as that would be. Um, but I think if we take this analogy and stretch it a little bit, it's all about being connected to what's natural, what's natural to us. And therefore, I like to think that that means if we follow a brain friendly way of training, um, the training is going to be much more effective. So don't force people to do things that are unnatural to them. Let's make sure we're familiar with, with that brain-friendly learning techniques and we're building them into our training. Another thing that um, happy people tend to be is physically active. Um, again, just going out for a leg stretch every single day really makes a difference. So in terms of our training, now that we can get back to face-to-face -to -face training, that's one of the benefits face-to-face -face has over virtual. We can make it more physical. We can get people out of their chairs. We can get them moving around and interacting. And I think that's really, really important because, again, accelerated learning principles um, tell us that there's this whole mind-body connection. So if the body is active and energized, the mind is more likely to be too. And that's going to help people learn more effectively. Another thing that comes up regularly is the importance of rest and sleep and practicing in mindfulness. Um, I must admit, mindfulness is something I'm working on. I'm not great at it. But in terms of our training design, that just screams out to me that we really need to make sure that we're building proper time for people to reflect rather than trying to cram in loads and loads of content and fill every spare minute with an activity. Because if people are busy, it means they're engaged. Reality is people do need to take what they've done, to think about it, to mull it over, think about what it means to them and to reflect in order to do something with it. Another key to happiness is the feeling of belonging, that you are accepted by a group, by your peers. People just take you for as you are. You don't have to try and be something that you're not. That must be incredibly stressful. So in terms of training, Again, the face-to-face -face, um, element does give perhaps easier opportunities for people to build relationships with one another, but of course that can be done online as well. So it's definitely not a one-way street. It's not um, trainer to delegate, delegate to trainer all the time. That interplay between participants is so incredibly important. And I think when you think about that as well and where that goes naturally, you're then talking about psychological safety, you're talking about collaborative working. Um, and that's why cohorts can be quite good because people will build those relationships over time, build their networks, feel safe. And when we feel safe, 
we're more likely to push ourselves out of our comfort zone. So making sure that we create that safe space is incredibly important. Um, two more to go. Another one is to feel in control of your own life. Um, that's why I run my own business. The thought of someone else controlling my life sends shivers down my spine. Um, so when we feel in control of our lives, we are generally happier. So how can we do that in a training event when we have a, a structure to follow, when we have a timetable, agenda, objectives to meet? Well, there are things that we can do. So we can allow people to have some say um, in what they do and how they do it. Maybe if you work in a large organization, you can um, allow people different ways to access the learning. So different times to access the learning. So they are having some say into what they're learning and how. There's also the option to do different levels of training. It's something I did with the corporate a few years ago. So if you just need a refresher, hey, it's a 90 minute session. If this is brand new to you, you have a full day plus some self-study. So allowing people some choice in how they learn, I think is very, very important. And the final thing that just keeps coming through to me in terms of what makes a happy life, what makes an easy life, is a life that is simple simple and uncomplicated. The more layers, conditional elements we build into our life, the more likely it is that everything's going to come crashing down like a pack of cards. So if one thing fails to happen, you know, somebody can't pick up your kids from school that day and then it's like a domino effect. It ruins the lives of 10 people because everything was so, fine, so finely balanced. Um, and what that means in training, it doesn't mean to say that we have to deliver boring training, far from it. Um, what that means is, I think we have to have a really clear aim. We have to have a red thread through that training. So a very clear theme um, that people can focus on and understand what it means to them. And we have to make sure that our training isn't too busy. So yes, we need to keep it active. Yes, we need to vary the pace. Yes, we need to um, build in different ways of engaging people but we don't want to include variety and novelty just for the sake of variety and novelty. We don't want to overload people with different training methods, particularly if you're training virtually, because if people are focused on working out how to complete the exercise, they're not focusing on what the exercise is all about, and therefore they're not getting the learning. So a bit of a long musing, um, but I think it's a really important one. So the links between what makes people happy in life is also what makes people happy and effective and productive in a training course. So for more musings like this and for more practical advice via Dear Training Designers Club, do check out the rest of the YouTube channel. There's the Training Design Podcast, which you can find on all major podcast platforms. And of course, there's the Training Designers Club. If you visit the website, which is www.trainingdesignersclub.co.uk, you will find all sorts of courses, free and low cost resources. And of course, you will have the opportunity to join our VIP membership, which is like having a team or a consultancy in your pocket.